Welcome everyone to Playboy Magazine 1966. I hope you've all had a very good week. Uh, I'm now kind of over the worst of COVID-19, which is good. I uh, hope to get back to normal next week and carry on with the projects that I had lined up to start last week, but obviously had to be put on hold while I was laying in bed, uh, aching and sweating with a headache. But anyway, we're here now. Um, this particular issue features a nice pictorial with the girls Rio. Um, we have this cover model Sissy with some very nice coloring here. Feels very kind of tropical. Um, we'll skip through to the first page. We have the Cyclone GT uh, or the Mercury Comet GT by Ford. Nice looking car. Um, always like the uh, motor vehicle ads in these. We've got London Fog here and we've got his uh, weatherall jacket we'll get through to some of the adverts and it's really nice this month there's some really classic 60s looking adverts uh, these ones here on the beaches with the yachts all very kind of playboy-esque uh, as you can imagine lots of traveling we have wildcat shoes again a nice advert i like the style of it um, really nice full color double spreads now um, the cigar you know the cigarette and cigar adverts are always very good and the tobacco ones always very nice style in those and I've noticed a lot of Twitter accounts that kind of um, follow for things like the adverts the classic smoking adverts and people wish they could go back to those times uh, obviously we know smoking is bad but a lot of people still enjoy uh, smoking and the kind of uh, culture around it particularly the social aspect you know so we've got That Man by Revlon, and this is probably one of my favourite car adverts that I've seen so far in Playboy, this uh, Dodge Charger. I mean, it's an amazing looking car, but just with the blue and the silver and that huge red um, light across the back, the red interior, it's a stunning looking car. Um, I think I actually want to own one, it's, it's that good. But um, no, it's, it's lovely, really nice advert for this month. Uh, we've got Clomp and Cloggin as well. And of course, Budweiser back with their double spread. Dr. Pepper, uh, winter warmer. Um, we have uh, Volkswagen, and it says, has the Volkswagen fad died out? And obviously we have the Volkswagen Beetles here. Obviously around the 60s, we had the Vol big surge in Volkswagens, you know, with the uh, the actual people carry on, what it's called now, the, the bus, the Volkswagen bus. Um, so obviously very popular. And then we've got this advert here, Fatigue, Englishmen have more dash. The French greater finesse, Italians are more suave. How come Scandinavian men get to carry on the way they do? And they've just got these big uh, thick neck jumpers on. Um, obviously for the winter months they have in Norway are particularly cold. So we've got Scotch and, sorry, uh, White and McKay Scotch. Once upon a North Atlantic mattress. And this is another advert here. They're trying to get um, sort of clever, you know, in these adverts in the 60s, kind of like the 50s, very sort of... Um, not tacky in a way, but they were over the top in, in some sense. There was just a lot of text on them and probably distracted you more than anything. Um, but it seems to be the way they were around that time. Admiral here, we've got um, Courier and Ives. JD, Stold Hickory, these are all familiar. Pentax as well. Go where the action is, Stardust. Obviously, we've got the casino here in uh, Las Vegas. So um, there's obviously a lot of stories around the Stardust and that kind of thing, lots of films based around them. And I think Casino was actually based around the Stardust, if I remember correctly. Um, but I'm pretty sure that was one of the main ones featured uh, in that film, um, if I recall. But obviously all the casinos in Vegas around that time were all uh, mob controlled. We've got the bomb, we've got the Austin Healy Sprite here. Uh, more Columbia Records. Um, we've got the majestic power of Sony Sound. This is one here that was quite interesting. Fill up with peach brandy flavor. And these are, these are actually cig um, cigars, I believe. Or it must be a... Oh, no, this must be a pipe tobacco. Sorry, that's why it's flavored. Um, we've got Ballads, Blues and Benton. RCA Victor. Barak Cares as well. Winthrop. And we've got Dante. London Playboy Club to open soon. You can head back a couple of issues to see uh, where I show you a Google Maps image of where this club actually still is. Obviously not as a, uh, a Playboy Club, but as a hotel now. Uh, and the other Playboy Club is literally just around the corner. And uh, it's a smaller building, um, but it's just around the corner. But it must have been amazing to go during the 60s uh, when this huge uh, casino opened. And that's primarily what it was, you know, casino and club. And then we've got uh, Winner Boats here. 
It says, last spring in Playboy, we claimed our quadrilift hole would go significantly faster than any other pleasure boat on the market. Competition horse laughed. Then one of our quadrilift boats shaved a whole week off a long-standing world's record. So um, I'm not sure exactly what that advert is for. I assume it's just normal speed boats. Um, but they're obviously talking about a bit of a competition there that they had won. We have uh, Slacks by Glen Oaks. And the Playboy interview for this month is Federico Fellini. And he is a uh, director. Uh, obviously, you can see here, um, La Strada, La Dolce Vita, an eight and a half. And interestingly enough, he had met, I believe, no, he had studied a uh, Jungian uh, kind of philosophy and he had actually gone on to take psychedelics and apparently it was a big influence on the filmmaking that he did uh, over the years and there's just a museum opened up in Italy, uh, I believe it's this week, there was an opening for uh, uh, I think it's a museum, or it might have been an exhibition just honouring his work and, and the person who he was as well so that's worth looking into if you don't know much about uh, Federico Fellini, but obviously went on to be a huge uh, director uh, very popular Big gun for Tiger Country, and this is the Fairlane GT, another Ford advert. I like the little tie in here with the bunnies and the uh, the tigers. Uh, Country Club, Malt Liquor, English Leather, we've got Champau, RCA Victor again, with some more equipment for your home. Um, what else have we got? More whiskey. You'd think anyone living in the 60s was uh, uh, an alcoholic and uh, perhaps addicted to cigarettes and many other things they judging by playboy magazine anyone seen this for the first time eric sokol here but people did used to drink a lot during this time it was one of those social things it was the thing to do this is a really nice feature this european fashion um dateline so we've got this gentleman here uh, in front of the acropolis a place i actually won't really want to go to uh, at some point so you can see him here in this white jacket with the white dress and then we've got some names mentioned uh, i think we have a hermes and we've got um, what was the other one I saw? Pierre Cardin, of course. So some nice designers here, still around today, of course. Uh, some more expensive than others, but certainly Pierre Cardin with the suits. We have those in, in Europe and in, in Britain. Hermes, of course, uh, still a, a huge brand. But some nice photos here from, from Europe. The Acropolis in the background. A Valentine by William Sarihan. And uh, we've got the Jazz Pole 1966 by Nat Hantoff, of course. Uh, a yearly feature, lots of names that we will see every single year. There's some new ones coming through as well, but all of the classic musicians here. Of course, uh, everyone will recognize this one. But yeah, many of the, the same names that we've seen for a very long time, but they are classic people within that circle of jazz. So, of course, they're going to keep reoccurring. And obviously, you have the Playboy Jazz Festivals, um, some nice uh, sculptures here. Look a bit sort of uh, horrified in a way, but yeah. They're uh, nice sculptures. So this is a decade of um, Playboy Jazz Pole winners. So it just shows you how long it's been going for, who's won what as well. Again, I'm not a massive, I'm not a massive fan of jazz. I don't follow the names. I don't look at all of the press that comes out with it and all the new albums. But when I listen to it, I enjoy it. So that's the main thing. I just put it on uh, and enjoy it. That's the same with most music. I don't buy albums. Uh, I don't follow any particular artists, really. Uh, I'm more of a person that will just sort of hear something, put it on, investigate a bit further. And then it just leads to more and more music. But I very rarely remember the song names, where they were produced by, um, who sometimes even knew the artist was. I just kind of skip through. Uh, but I usually try and track down the, the um, actual artist so I can go on and look at see what else they did. But we've got Student Princess here, and this is our Playmate for the Month, uh, Melinda Windsor. It's actually a pseudonym, it wasn't her real name. And uh, I think the UCLA is where she studied, and they actually wrote to Playboy because she, um, the, the name Melinda Win Windsor wasn't recognised within UCLA. And she had taken a year from 1965, and she wasn't studying in 1966, so the UCLA didn't have any record of her for that particular year. But it wasn't her real name, and I didn't actually look into what her real name was. Apparently it was, I think, quite secretive, and I didn't want to disclose it here because she is still alive. So I kind of left it at that and just thought, well, if it's not on the Wikipedia page or anywhere else obvious, then uh, I'll leave it as it is. And obviously you can do your own research if you want to find that. So here's a centerfold for the month. She looks like a celebrity, um, but I can't picture who. Um, it, it's bugging me, but she does look like someone famous, but I'll have to come back to that. So we'll skip through that part. Playboy's party jokes, of course. Obviously, give this a pause. I know some of you like to read those. 
Um, who else have we got? Seagull here as well. A little lexicon of love. This is by Ray Russell. Um, we've got Thomas Mario with more food, our resident in-house um, connoisseur uh, for food and drink. We've got Mood Ebony by James Farmer, uh, the leader of Care Examines the Emergent Concept of Negritude and its um, activist impact on the struggle for civil rights. So still going. We've had uh, quite a few features in the last few consecutive issues about the civil rights movement, obviously, which is flaring up across the US around this time. We've got Gayne Wilson. Um, Partridge Shoot from Elephant Back, Jack Denton Scott. We'll just keep going through here. Some of these cartoons. The Girls of Rio, so a nice pictorial for you all. So I'll go through these just quite slowly, just so you can take a look, but obviously pause where you'd like to um, to have a look in a bit more depth if you want to zoom in in any of the names or any faces that you may recognize. I don't particularly recognize any. But it's a nice photo shoot, nonetheless. Again, very natural looking. Alberto Vargas here, the pin-up artist. Um, what else have we got? Madame Flipper's Defense. This is the Ribald Classic. If you don't know what the Ribald Classics are, if you're new to Playboy Review, these are kind of uh, generally erotic stories or uh, sort of semi-erotic stories. And they're taking some, well, most of them are from um, times that where they were... Um, kind of recorded, written down, but not published. And then people came in and they were republished in Playboy and, and rewritten, I think, in some circumstances as well. Um, more cartoons. Sight, sights and sounds of the 60s, or 66, sorry. Um, so this is all the new equipment for the time. All very high-end with the abstract art. It's all, uh, all very 60s. I'm really getting the feel for it now, to be honest. Now we're into the uh, mid and uh, entering into the late 60s. Uh, as I've scanned ahead, I've seen some really awesome features. The History of Sex and Cinema, Arthur Knight and Hollis Alper. This is part seven, so make sure you read back if you are interested in a lot of those features on how it evolved through the years, from the very early um, times as well. We're talking from sort of late 18th century, uh, sorry, late 1800s uh, into the nine, into the 19, sorry, early 1900s. So just got a continuation here. And obviously more smokers. Tarryton. Tarryton. Don't think they're still going. I don't see that name around much anymore. Cult 45. What else have we got? Just a little uh, continuation here. And I hope you've all, I say, had a very good week. I'm going to be back on the weekend with another issue and a vlog video. I'm going to start vlogging a project that I'm working on for this exact channel. Um, and I'm going to start doing some small book reviews as well, but I might put that on a separate channel just to keep it away from the Playboy side of things. But there is going to be a vlog just detailing some developments that I'm working on for this channel. It was meant to start last week, but as I said, I couldn't get around to doing it because I was in bed with a headache and a really bad backache. So um, I'm glad that's passed. I'm very thankful that COVID kind of went easy on me. Um, I know some people have suffered with it a lot, but I, I'm not out of the woods yet. I still have some minor symptoms from it, but um, I think I'm out of the worst part. So just look after yourself. Obviously, take your vitamins, get your vaccines if you uh, think that you need them. So that's us almost done for this particular month. And we're all finished. So I will see you in a couple of days for the next one will be in March 1966. Um, I have already read it and it's a, a very nice issue. Um, but obviously if you want to read ahead, you can always go to the Playboy archive. You can sign up there, pay a yearly fee or monthly and you get to explore the archive and Playboy TV and many other things that come with it. Otherwise you can just come back here, subscribe and like, and I'll keep going through these issues and discussing things. And I'll be bringing some more content your way next week. Have a good weekend. I'll see you all soon.